The girl hid under the bed to witness the scene of her father being stabbed in the heart by the killer. Tears welled up in her eyes, but she dared not make any noise. She was afraid of being discovered by them. But the agonizing torture didn't end there. A sledgehammer fell straight down, but instantly sprayed on the girl's face, despite her efforts to hold back her grief. But in the end, she was still discovered. But the enemy didn't kill her. Instead, they sold her to the red light district. Just as the old man was about to make a move on her, suddenly a mysterious man appears. The man manages to rescue the girl and teaches her various fighting skills and gun knowledge. The girl's name is Sissy. A few years of spending time together, Sissy gradually fell in love with this mature man. On this day, she finally had the chance to face her enemy. She was full of hope and ready to take revenge, unexpectedly, but fell into the other side of the trap. The girl was tied up. The enemy told her that he was not the murderer of his father. Hearing that the murderer is someone else, Sissy was confused. When she tried to find out the truth, suddenly a figure breaks the window. Jack rolls into the room, then gets up and quickly fights the other man. Jack killed his enemy but was wounded himself. Jack rescues Sissy again. Passing by a bridal store, Jack stops, decides to give Sissy a name. Soon after, the two got married in the presence of their brothers, intended to live adult life after ending their hatred. Unexpectedly an accident happened. One day when the two were having dinner, Jack received a phone call and left in a hurry. Late at night, Sissy received a call from Jack's subordinate, informs her that Jack is dead. It turns out that Jack had been secretly investigating the killer of Sissy's father. Turns out he was found out. He asked his subordinate to handle the matter. Unexpectedly the subordinate was captured by the other party instead. In order to rescue his subordinate, Jack went deep into the enemy camp alone. As a result, he was ambushed by the other side and died on the spot. Looking at her husband's disfigured body, Sissy is completely devastated. What is your father? Sissy ignored her subordinates and single-handedly broke into the other side's camp. Armed with hatred, she's unstoppable, one shot at a time, leaving no survivors. In an instant, the entire floor of enemies were killed, leaving only corpses and bloodstains all over the floor. She replaced the bullets, slowly went up the stairs. When the pistol was knocked down, it was replaced with the double knife, and new round of slaughter began. She was undaunted with nothing but hatred in her head. The other side couldn't resist at all, driven by hatred. She showed no mercy. Her knives were deadly. Not long after the wailing on the passageway, opened another door, finally met the gangster. Facing these outlaws, Sissy is not afraid. However, her stamina is gradually running out. Facing so many people, Sissy was finally attacked by the other side. At this time she saw a barbell on the ground. She immediately picked it up and slammed it against her opponent's knee. Then she hit the face again, while the other party was still slowing down. Sissy leapt up and mounted the other man's neck, using the ropes to wrap him in a death grip, then jumps down and breaks right through the window. Sissy stops in midair. The gangster is finally strangled alive by her. At that moment the siren sounded. Sissy jumped. The great revenge was avenged. Sissy didn't resist. She was taken straight away. But the police didn't take her to jail. Instead, they took her to a more mysterious place. The girl just slept but had her face changed. It turns out that her performance in single-handedly fighting the gangsters in a bloody battle has attracted the attention of the top brass of the night. A. The head of the National Intelligence Agency sees her potential and decides to train her to be a top agent. So Sissy is taken to a mysterious space for plastic surgery. When she wakes up she finds herself locked up in a mysterious space. In order to escape, Sissy pretended to faint. When the staff came to check, Sissy directly swung her fist and hit the other person's face. Then she got up and added a kick and then kicked away the chair and turned over to escape. She did not expect to open the door at the moment but was dumbfounded. The people inside the room were actually dancing ballet. She saw them coming after her. Sissy couldn't think too hard but continued to run. She accidentally broke into a cooking class. Just then a bad student suddenly stuck out his foot and tripped her. The staff took the opportunity to rush up and grabbed her. Sissy backhanded him onto the table and quickly grabbed a knife and took him hostage. Then she kicked the door open and escaped. She passes a stage and goes backstage to the dressing room. Strangely enough, everyone who saw her action didn't feel scared. On the contrary, they were all calm as if they were used to it. When Sissy asked where the exit was, a woman stepped forward and said she knew where it was. She hoped that Sissy would take her with her to escape. Then she opened a secret door. <laughs> the three come to the rooftop, the woman points across and says she can escape if she jumps across. After saying that she leaps and jumps over, Sissy saw this and immediately followed her. But before she landed, she was attacked by the woman on the other side, hit a shot and fell down. It turned out that this woman was Kwan, the head of the National Intelligence Agency. She was very satisfied with Sissy's performance and invited her to join the National Intelligence Agency. But at this point, Sissy has already lost the desire to live, because all her relatives are dead. She is filled with anger and yells at the minister. 
the minister yanked her towards him, and she said to her, live for your child. Then she put an ultrasound photo on the table. Sissy then realized she was pregnant. Looking at this ultrasound sheet, finally compromised, she asked the minister what she needed from her. The minister told her, if she worked for the National Intelligence Agency for 10 years, she would be free, and there was a pension. For the freedom and happiness of the child in her womb, Sissy agreed, started to undergo a series of rigorous training. In addition to the most basic physical fighting and shooting, there are also a variety of vocational skills, including cooking, makeup and drama. The reason for learning so many skills is to be able to disguise herself perfectly when carrying out the mission. A few months later, the child was finally born. For the sake of the child's future, Sissy trained even harder. Due to her excellent performance, the minister gave her a real-world mission in advance and promised her, as long as she can complete the mission, she can take her daughter out of here. Sissy took the mission. She went to Adila and found the target and successfully completed the mission. The minister also kept his promise. He prepared a new identity for her and also arranged a new residence for her. On the first day of moving, the young man next door approached her. It turned out that the young man was also arranged by the minister. The purpose was to monitor Sissy's every move. Unexpectedly, a fondness developed. The two gradually fell in love with each other. It wasn't long before the young man proposed to Sissy. Due to Sissy's special identity, she found the minister, hoping that the organization would agree to their marriage. The minister agreed. Unexpectedly on the wedding day, the accident happened instead. She suddenly receives an assassination mission on her wedding day. She walks into the restroom, as instructed. She takes out the sniper rifle parts in the toilet sink and starts assembling it. As she assembles the sniper rifle, the minister was directing her where the target was located. As she set up the rifle to aim at the target person, she was instantly dumbfounded. The opponent was actually her long-dead ex-husband. Sissy's heart went soft, deliberately shooting off the mark to let the target person go. After the mission failed, Jack, who was assassinated, tracked the trajectory of the ballistics to the sniping position. He accessed the surveillance, even though Sissy has had a facelift, but Jack still recognized her at once. Soon Jack found Sissy. He asked Sissy if she didn't recognize him, but Sissy just asked who he was. Sissy responds with a calm gaze, but the movement of her hand betrays her. However, Jack learns that she is newly married with a family and says that he has mistaken her for someone else. Then he quietly left, looking at Jack's distant figure. Sissy is finally relieved, and after Jack left, the first time to investigate Sissy's current husband, what shocked him was that her husband was an undercover agent arranged by the organization to spy on her. So he sends the evidence to Sissy. After learning the truth, Sissy was completely devastated. She originally thought she had found someone she could rely on for the rest of her life. Unexpectedly, all this was a conspiracy of the organization. Impulsively, she told Jack that the organization was preparing a new round of assassination plan. Told Jack, as a result, the female agents sent by the organization were captured live by Jack's subordinates before they could start their actions. After Quan learned the news, angrily, he captured Sissy back to the base. She demanded a hostage exchange with Jack, who knows that on the way to the exchange, Jack reappeared. Jack crashed his motorcycle. Quan's subordinates thought it was an accident and questioned him, but he didn't realize that the motorcyclist was Jack. Jack shot and killed everyone in the car. After he successfully rescued Sissy, Jack handed her a gun. He told her to go and bring out her daughter and leave with her. Unexpectedly Sissy just ran downstairs. There was a sudden explosion in the house. The husband fell down from upstairs holding his daughter, seeing her loved ones die in front of her again. Sissy was in pain, collapsed to the extreme. She thought it was the minister's punishment for her. In her anger she came to the base and questioned the minister as to why he had killed them. The minister did not answer. Instead, he played a surveillance video. It turns out that Jack was behind all of this. Despite knowing that it was his own daughter, Jack showed no mercy. This angered Sissy to the core. She shot the screen. That night, she drove to Jack's camp, straight to the gas, crashed into the room. Before the crowd could react, Sissy took out her submachine gun and fired wildly. The people in the room had no chance to fight back. They were all wiped out. After she cleared out all the obstacles, Sissy rushed upstairs and found Jack. The first thing she said was to ask him if he ever loved her. Jack looked at her, then replied, I have loved you, but because I killed your father, so I can't continue to love you. Hearing this Sissy threw away the gun in her hand, decided to have a fair duel with him, sort of repaying him for his years of parenting. fought from upstairs to downstairs. Jack's subordinates just arrived. Hearing the sirens, rushed to escort him to a bus. Sissy saw this and immediately grabbed their car and chased after him. She smashed the windshield, using a mineral water bottle to hold the gas pedal, then climbed out of the car, sitting on a hood, maneuvered the steering wheel with one hand, chasing frantically behind. When the two cars gradually approached, Sissy didn't hesitate to jump directly onto the bus, kick the glass into the car, in the car to start the final fight, but in the heat of battle, the bus suddenly lost control. There was a car accident. Jack was seriously injured. Sissy slowly walked up to him and swung the axe, ending the Jack who ruined her life. 